last build of the build, I think. Welcome back to the shop and the channel and <clears throat> the home stretch on the chest of drawers. Uh, next is going to be the base, which will be the last construction project for the chest of drawers. Here's the front. And I got the two sides here in smaller pieces. They're, they're milled to the width this way so that they're all matched as it wraps around the bottom of the piece. Uh, the process is going to be mill the profile. So this is not going to be a fastened profile. Mill the profile into the pieces, all three pieces, before I go anywhere else. Because if I cut, if I, if I cut the miters so these fit around here, around the, the cabinet, correctly, and then I run a bit, router bit along here, there's a chance of blowing it out where that thin wood is. So cut the profiles first, which is the inverse of the profile up here. Then uh, I can easily put these up against the, the I mark the miters and cut the miters here and then cut, put them up onto the cabinet and the mark where I need to cut here and then those will be done. Uh, almost done. Then uh, this one I'm going to do last. I'll do one miter and sneak up till I get the other miter exactly where it needs to be. Two reasons. One, so it fits around, everything fits around the frame correctly. But the mo more pressing reason is you want this piece cut to its length before you cut out the, the bracket feet profiles. You want them to be symmetric, not a little bit this way and a little bit that way. You want it to be symmetric. So once the miters are cut, that's where I mark. That's where I put down my templates and mark out where I'm going to cut for the bracket feet. I'm going to about two inches here, all the way across and into the bracket feet, working on the design. Then once that's all done, then I can put it all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, take the drawers out, put it up on the sawhorses, so I can see the butt end, of it, the bottom end of it here, and then work it like that, like that. So I can get all the get these parts in place. Once these are in place, fastened permanently and done, I'm not going to make it removable like I did, like I stated earlier. At that point, it's all over but the finish and the, and the hardware. And the finish, again, repeating myself, the finish is going to be amber shellac sprayed on, and then wipe on polyurethane, Watco wipe on polyurethane, which I like a lot. So let's set up the router and cut the profile. Back over at the router table. So I set everything up. Um, here's the bit I set in place. And I have a uh, fence fingerboard facing downward, of course, to hold it to the bit to make sure everything works fine. The bit is just a, a hair lower than I would normally put it. If this works out without any burning, I'll leave it that way. If there's a little bit of burning, which there shouldn't because I'm going to put it through pretty quickly, uh, I can raise the bit up that one thirty-second of an inch and just take a skim cut. So I'll, show, I'll do one of the pieces. This is marked what's going to face the outside world, what isn't going to face the outside world. And so that's the part that goes down because that's going to face the outside world. Headset. Green Day. And there we go. So um, I'll do the rest of the pieces. And then we'll go on and move on to the next thing. And there we go. Profile is in place. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to take the shorter ones, we're going to cut them to the correct length, then pretty much, and put, put the uh, excuse me put the uh, miter on there and then cut them to the to the correct length and that's basically they'll be done until we do the profile for the uh, for the bracket feet themselves. Got a bit of a cold, so bear with me. Okay, too tall for the chop saw, <clears throat> and the chop saw won't lay down far enough the way I've got it configured right now. So, miter gauge, stop block, 45 on the 
on bevel on the saw blade. I've checked it. It's just about perfect. It's perfect. I'm going to run this through and show you the cut. I can do the other short one the same way. The long one is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'll have to suss that out a little bit, but I, the important cut is the first cut. And the second cut is the sneak up cut on the long one because I'm doing it on the front of the, of the unit. So let's make a cut here on the table saw. 45 degree miter cut. And there we go, burn that's never going to be seen. So this is going to be on the right side of the, of the cabinet. Now we do the left side of the cabinet. So I'll put this over here, right side. Now the left side, I want to have the miter cut on uh, <coughs> this side here, this end here. And I do believe that that's just going to be a matter of sticking it in here and running it this way. In other words, that one I ran with the with the the profile down. This one I run to the saw with the profile up and I get the 45 degree. No, I don't. Ah, profile in the back. Profile front in the other one, profile back this way. That'll give me the 45 degree cut here to fit it on the left side of the cabinet. Right there. This may or may not work. There we go. Okay then. Again, let's uh, let's cut this one out. I don't know what happened there. A little cut, little break. I can fix that. But then again, this is going to go on the left side over here. So uh, now we have to th figure out how we're going to do the long one without causing sliding of the piece back and forth. The difficult part is that that doesn't extend out further and far enough. I don't have one that will do that. This is the Craig, which I like a lot. The new Craig like this is not very good. I have a video link in the description on my problems with the new Craig miter gauge. So let's get the other piece. So if I run this with the profile to the back, I'm going to get the same cut I just got. Let me see what I can do about getting this accurately without, oops, okay, let me double check that. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. That's caught pretty well into the fence, so I think we're going to be good. This is the right side of the base, front base. So I'll have to sneak up on the other side to get it to match the actual width of, of the, <clears throat> the cabinetry itself. So let's, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to off camera, I'm just going to trim these to length and then we'll work on this again to get it to fit. Then we start assembling this part of the cabinet and then we do the finish at some point. <laughs> Ready to sneak up on the Second cut. So I've got this one with the 45 going that way. So this 45 has to go this way. It's got to go through the saw with the uh, the profile detail facing this way. Now I've got a, uh, uh, a, a sneak up line here on the workpiece. Let me show you. Sneak up line. <clears throat> so I, I, I know about where it's going to enter the workpiece here. I've moved the board that way and I'll sneak up on it. I'll make a cut and slowly work up until I split that line a little bit to the right of that line, and then I'll test fit it, and then come back and, and finish the cut. Hopefully it'll be one or two more cuts, and that's it. So let's give that a shot, and don't screw it up, because I haven't got any more cherry this size to do this from. And I did a dumb thing. Uh, didn't have the camera on when I did the sneak-up cuts, but I successfully got the sneak-up cuts. So 
So there's the other side of it. So it's going to go down over on the left-hand side, and here's the right-hand side, the miter cut. And then the two sides, these are the two have been cut to the proper length to fit alongside the, uh, the, the, the uh, cabinet, chest of drawers, and of course my trusty little frame to hold it all together. Along with, I'm going to do uh, some corner blocking where the, where the front and the sides come together. And that way I give it a little more strength and a little more stability. This is going to hold, this is going to hold that load without a problem at all, but that little extra stability in the corners. This will be glued, screwed, and have corner blocking to keep it all together. What I need to do now is get all the drawers out, put this thing up on the, saw, on the sawhorse so I have a back. I can work against the bottom of this thing to make sure everything's going to fit correctly. Make any changes I may have to make. Shouldn't be any. Other than that, um, I have to finish the design for the, the, um, the profiles for the uh, bracket feet, do the template, and then cut these bracket feet out of these blanks. This, this'll, and this will be all one piece, two inches across the top. These will be all one piece, but the bracket feet will be cut in either, either end. So let me get that bracket feet done thing done. And then we'll move on from there, putting this whole thing together. And we have a pattern for the bracket feet. These are flat bracket feet. These aren't going to be like OG cut or anything like that. Just flat pieces, obvious by the pieces of wood. So <clears throat> these are the bracket feet pattern. This is period style. Um, and what I've done is I've drawn them on the pieces. Can you see in the camera? Yeah, to here, long line on top, and here. Now, I'm going to cut these out. These have been sanded, by the way, very smooth. The outside part that's going to face the outside world and have the finish on it. But I'm going to uh, cut these out off camera because it's just a lot of finicky, little boring bits of cutting things out on a bunch of tools. Anyway, so I'll get these cut out, and then once they're cut out, we can go start with the actual assembly on the workbench. Uh, this ought to be fun. The finished product. A lot of sawdust was made, a lot of cuts were cut. So the tools used were the bandsaw over there, my cyber saw, and my oscillating spindle sander. And that gave me this final shape from the template it's done in, uh, to use an architectural term, it's done in the language, architectural language of the period. What does that mean? Uh, fancy words for it has a horn here and a little, dip, a little dip here and maybe even this curve here. But the horn is kind of indicative of furniture pieces from this period. You look a lot of the 18th century pieces, some early 19th century pieces on Google and you go images and you'll see a lot of bases that have this kind of uh, vernacular going on. So that's what I did. I did it the way it should have been done in the period. Um, now I got to assemble the three pieces with a, uh, a secondary wood corner block in here, and then mount it onto the frame here, and then mount it on the cabinet here. But I got to get this up on the sawhorses to do that. That's going to be a bit of a chore because it's only me in the shop. Anyhow, let's, let's get busy and, um, and, and put these things together and mount it onto the piece. Here's my setup. Corner block, made of secondary wood, obviously, pine. It's gonna go right there. It's gonna be down from the top of this base uh, so that the frame will sit on top of it here and leave a quarter inch exposure above that for the cabinet to sit in. And I have my part of my square handle here to make sure I get it lined up with the edge. It's going to get glued and pinned in place, after which I'll drill the holes and put the screws in after the glue cures. That way I'm sure it doesn't shift at all when I'm doing anything. And then when I put the two side pieces on, <clears throat> I'll clamp it all in place so that I can just glue and screw. Maybe I'll pin as well before I, before I screw it in. Anyway, let's do one, and then we'll proceed. I'll proceed with the rest of it.
that's essentially it. <clears throat> that's the simple uh, setup. Now I'm going to do the other side, and then I can fasten the sides of the base on. So let me get that done, and we'll come back and we'll put all, all this, most of this together. The base is done for now. I mean, of course, it needs finishing all that, but uh, you saw me put the uh, pieces of cherry together onto which I have mounted the frame. And the frame is mounted with screws and glue here and here, and also on the ends with glues and screw, screw screws and glue. It is mounted with the correct reveal all the way around so that the the chest, chest will sit down inside this and have the correct reveal all the way around. I also, pursuant to antique furniture, added a support foot on the back. So it adds a bit more support. That is also glued and screwed in place. So now, <laughs> I have to get that thing on sawhorses, laying on its back, so I can go up and start fitting this in place, screwing it in place, and then I think at that point it's all over but the finish. All over but the shouting. Uh, I got it up on here. Mar helped me get it up here on the sawhorses. I can work from the back here. It's the only place I can get a good camera shot. No space and drawers are all over here and tight, too tight over here. Um, I've already pre-drilled the holes in the frame in the base. So once I mount it up here by hand and I'm happy with it, then I can go ahead and and drive the screws through. I'm going to be driving the screws through the base into the pine bottom. Uh, let's go get the base and stick it on there. Snug fit, snug fit. Yeah, of course I tested this beforehand. Now, snug fit. You don't want a gap between this trim piece and and the case itself you want it to look like a nice solid uh one unit like like this is almost part machined part of the base of the bottom of, of the cabinet itself so now i have my uh, one and a half inch mcfeely's not a sponsor square drive screws i know my backs to the camera Um, I've mentioned before that I started, I learned about these screws when I was building wooden boats. But those screws were silicon bronze. So I got the first two top in there. Everything is still copacetic. Do the bottom ones now. That's, right now, that's solid. I don't need to put any more screws in it, but, you know, uh, belt and suspenders. And snug. Okay, the bottom is on. You may even see it in the camera. There's a little burning here. Uh, I'll scrape some of that off, but it's never going to be seen. Uh, this is part of the cutting and sanding, whatever. Uh, that's going to be out of, out, out of sight, but I'm, I might go ahead and scrape that off anyway. So the base is in place. It's all over with the shouting, folks. The next step is the finish now i have to get this do some touch-up sanding on this a little bit here and there um a little bit touch up on a couple of the drawers and then spray on the shellac so let's end this this uh this uh episode here with the actual finish of the cabinet itself the drawers so it's a really officially a chest of drawers now and next time you see it next video we're going to be painting and or excuse me spraying and finishing this i gotta build a little spray tent in here because it's going to be too cold to do the shellac outside like i did last time so 18th century chest of drawers for my clothes wonderful and until next time oh before we sign off 
uh, upcoming video, I'm going to be replacing the chop saw with a different chop saw. Um, I like this one, but I've decided to move on to the Bosch articulating one. Uh, there's a side reason for that. It has good dust collection, but link in the description. Travis at um, Shop Nation has done a beautiful job of designing, engineering and designing really elegant chop, uh, dust collection solutions for chop saws because it is the biggest offender in the shop. So go over, I'll link in the description to his page and, and to his uh, store. Uh, he's not, he, I, I'm not getting out of anything out of this. He's not a sponsor or anything like that. I just like what he does. He's got some really elegant solutions to shop storage or whatever, of course, of which I didn't take any advantage of. Anyhow, that's, I'm going to replace it with this, which is going to be a little bit of a redesign of the box because um, I want to make the saw adjustable up and down, front and back, side to side, so that I can keep everything coplanar easily. As things settle and things shift, you lose that coplanar, and I want to keep it all coplanar and all the settings and height correct. correct. So that'll come up for sale, and I'll get that. Uh, for future woodworking projects, we're going to start with some small ones now. I'm going to do some of those um, colonial pipe boxes like I showed in a previous video. Pre I was in prelude to a build, to this build. Uh, I'm going to do some um, uh, some of those. And Mara and I are going to do some uh, wall pockets, which is an 18th century or colonial thing. It's basically a little box that hangs on the wall. You can put stuff. It was called a wall pocket. So we're going to build some of those. i got a lot of pine that I've used for other projects here that we can put into those because that's what those would have been made of and painted with milk paint. So that's what's coming up. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, make great things out of wood.